be demonstrating today is repairing a 2003 Lincoln Navigator cluster where the VFD or vacuum fluorescent display intermittently has segments out. And if I push on it or touch it a little bit, it will typically come back, which is a good sign that it could be a, what's called a cold solder joint. I'm going to go ahead and start by disassembling the cluster. I've already removed the cluster from the car. And I'm going to start by removing, there are seven bolts on the back or screws. It uses a 5.5 millimeter socket or what appears to be approximately a T15 Torx. fairly easy to do, just I'm going to remove all of the screws and set them to the side. With that done, I'm going to remove the back plastic cover, exposing the printed circuit board inside. Now, unfortunately in this case, the vacuum display is located between the front cluster and the back circuit board and connected with a small ribbon cable. So we'll have to remove this circuit board and set it to the side. I'm going to go ahead and start by gently connect, disconnecting it from the motors on the back and then carefully remove the three cables that are located on connecting the front to the back. With that removed, I'm going to go ahead and also set that to the side. You can see here I've exposed the back of the unit with the three cables I've had to disconnect. Now you want to pay attention to the orientation of those cables so that it does get reconnected in the same positions. The vacuum fluorescent display we're looking at is right down here on the bottom left. I'm actually going to go ahead and go through with turning the unit over as I need to expose the front. There are four screws on the front. Now for the matter of, for the sake of time, I have partially removed these to make it a little quicker. From here, there's going to be, you can go ahead and remove the three, or the four tabs holding the front of the display on, and then four tabs holding the back of the display cover on. And just do this carefully to prevent any breaking. And some of the front ones, or the bottom ones, reconnected, I'll just go ahead and pop those loose again and it came through came out without too many problems and go ahead and set this one to the side also the next piece that will come off is the shroud <coughs> but I'm going to go ahead and keep that handy the next thing I need to do is remove the front panel from the the plastic housing it may be a little bit stuck depending on how old the vehicle is. Mine is definitely a little bit stuck. I just have to gently work it loose. Again, being trying to be careful to not break anything that's old and plastic. It's starting to come loose here. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and use the, the front shroud to go ahead and set this on to prevent any damage to the needles. From here, I've exposed the back side of the, the vacuum fluorescent display. The top row of pins along with the bottom row of pins is where the issue most likely is. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and simply re-solder them. As and hopefully this will correct the issue.
Now, unfortunately, I did not bring my soldering tip cleaner, so I'm gonna kinda just shake off some of my excess solder on plate here. Pardon my uh, redneck way of doing things here. And I'm just using a standard solder. Um, this is a no clean solder, so it's a little bit different than your standard solder, so it doesn't leave as much flux residue on the board. But any standard 6040 solder should work. These bottom pins are proving to be a little trickier. That's probably just because of the angle. So I'll go ahead and just turn the board around, the board around here and go from the bottom side. Just gives me a better working angle. One thing you'll notice if you, some pins may take quite a bit of heat to solder and those are typically going to be ground connections. So they have a lot larger circuit board that you have to heat up to temperature. I'm also being especially careful right up here in the middle on the, this row as there's a lot of resistors close by and I don't want to eat, spill, it, spill any or get any excess solder on the board or cause any bridges with solder. And that would cause more problems with the cluster than I already have. And now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the bottom rows of pins. And there's a, quite a few here also. And with any luck, this will correct my problem. It's not a bad problem, it's just annoying. Sometimes you just can't see the entire display and segments of it are cut out or missing. And I know I'm shaking my extra solder off on just an old paper plate. Normally I'd use a I have a tip cleaner that I can put this into where it'll clean up the tip and re re reflux it and retin it nicely. But as that's not with my soldering iron right now and I don't want to go have to go looking for it while I'm in the middle of this, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep on going. With that, I've now soldered all of the pins for the connection. I'm just gonna do a quick look to see if there's any I didn't get or any that look like they might need to be re-soldered again. I do see one up here that looks a little bit light on the, does not look like I, I may have missed it or it doesn't look like it's well soldered.
And with that, it looks like they're all successfully re-soldered. I don't see any signs of extra solder or solder bridges. So we'll go ahead and get the cluster reassembled and put it back in the truck and give it a try. I may also, while I'm at it though, I'm gonna go ahead and retouch this cable just because the cluster's apart. Most likely there's nothing wrong right here though. go ahead and turn off my solder iron so I don't burn myself and from here we'll go ahead and start with the reassembly of the cluster the one of the trickiest parts is going to be putting the cables back through some of the holes that are located in the assembly specifically the ribbon cable that controls the lighting for the the uh, stepper motors that drive the gauge needles that goes into a small notch here, and unfortunately there's quite the little crimp in the cable. And it just takes a little bit of finessing to get it in. And that I put it through. I'm gonna go ahead and I just slide everything back into place and then flip it back over and make sure it's all in place. like it actually settled in quite nicely. Well, we've got a little bit right here. Let's take a look. Or it's not sitting right on this front corner. We'll take a look and see what's causing it to bind up a little bit. Okay, as it pops out over there, just the cable was not sitting all the way in, causing it to bind up a little bit. This top cable here, I was able to pull it out of the way and get it back in. We'll go ahead and reassemble the black surround along with the clear front. And then I'm going to go ahead and reinstart by reinstalling the screws. Unfortunately, if this does not fix the issue, it will require replacement of the entire VF display and I could it either have to be component replaced, I'd have to find a correct one, or swap that part out from a, another cluster. Um, I believe the mileage for the vehicle is going to be stored on the main circuit board that's located on the back. There are some chips set on there that would be most likely used for that. flip it back over again and we'll go through the process of attaching the cables back onto the circuit board. This is going to be a little bit trickier, um, especially this cable here is a little on the bottom that connects the VFD. It's a little bit tight, but it did go in. It will slowly connect up each cable. set it flat here and again this is why paying attention to the cable positions as you're disassembling it is very important because these cab these cables could plug in either way but only one position is incorrect or not incorrect one position is correct and we'll gently make sure that the circuit board goes back down correctly that I'm not pinching or breaking or damaging any of those cables, which it does not look like it. And then we'll gently push, get the circuit board connected back up to the stepper motors. And we'll go ahead and put the cover back on and then reinstall the screws.
And I could use a power driver for this also, but they typically are a little more powerful and I don't want to cause damage again. One thing to note, it may take me a couple of days to know if this actually did correct the issue, um, as it did not always occur for me. Um, it was worse on colder mornings, however, the issue has been getting more prevalent here. Uh, even though it hasn't been so cold out, it used to be that it only did it when it was fairly cool out in the morning. And then when the truck came up to temperature, it would work fine. But that completes this process here. The gauge has been re-soldered and reassembled, and now it's ready for reassembly in the truck.